Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to the 10th episode of Psych Talks with Teachers and I'm your host Ms. Basha, a director at ICHA's Institute of Clinical Hypnosis and Related Sciences. And today we have with us Dr. Zahur Lone to talk about the importance of research methodolo methodology as a subject in psychology. I would quickly like to introduce our organization. ICHAS is an organization dedicated to behavioral, emotional, mental growth of individuals from all the areas of the society through education, intervention, and guidance. Our institution is based on a solid value system of quality and philosophy of positive psychology, where we believe that therapy is not about focusing on the weaknesses, but it is about helping people find and apply their strengths. Before we begin, I would also like to mention our MHP challenge, which is a visit a mental health practitioner challenge, an initiative by mental health practitioner requesting people to seek help before it's too late. I would also like to request everyone who's watching us to feel free to ask any kind of questions that you have in the comment section on our live today, and we would surely answer them. You could also start a watch party uh, on Facebook so that your friends and family can benefit out of this. I would like to start with the introduction of Dr. Zahur Ahmed Loan, who is an assistant professor uh, in psychology at lovely professional university, Jalandhar. He, he has taught foundation course on uh, research psychology for student, uh, PhD students. He's also a permanent member of research advisory committee at LPU, which is lovely professional university. He's done his master's and PhD from India's most reputed uh, Central University, Aligarh Muslim University. He has an extensive background in guiding uh, five PhD scholars. Um, till date, he's also published more than 10 papers in reputed journals. So a very warm welcome, Dr. Zahur, to Psych Talks with Teachers. Um, Dr. Zahur, are you um, there? I think we lost him. Dr. Zahur, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing. Okay, okay. Can we start? Yeah, I'm hearing uh, there is a little bit of connection interruption. Sorry for that. My apologies for that. No uh, problem, no problem. This, uh, yeah. So I have done a, way, a brief introduction about you. And uh, we can start with um, the, you know, we can start with the questions, a brief introduction about uh, research uh, methodology as a topic yes yes absolutely as a subject what would how would you explain research methodology uh, as a subject yes yes uh, so if we uh, let's talk about like the basics of the psychology uh, Dr. We... Zahur, one thing can you just come in front of the camera because you're going a little bit on the side yeah this is fine yeah that is fine yeah so if we generally speak of uh, psychology and in context of its historical background, when we date back the Wilhelm Moon's uh, efforts into the psychology, so he's the person who is responsible to, who, who can be credited to bring the psychology into the mainstream of science. Because when, okay. when uh, any subject is to be credited, yeah, to be called as a science, so we must have the purest form of the experimental approach and the scientific flavor in that, into that subject. So. Basically, uh, talking in context of research methodology, in the similar context, we can label this field, we can label this branch as to be very scientific in flavor and it can be duly credited uh, just because it added flavor, it, it added its credentials into the psychology to bring it into the mainstream of the science as giving it to the scientific flavor. Because when you generally speak of research in psychology, particularly like, uh, research methodology as a subject as a discipline teaches us what are the very due steps to carry out research in psychology and how can we make it more scientific and how can we make it more differentiated than every other field how can we make it more differentiated than every other abstract knowledge isn't it so research methodology as a discipline teaches us the steps each and every step and how to use the very standardized tools how to you go for the very standard format of sampling and how to do uh, the interpretation of the results in a scientific manner as a subject so when we speak of its uh, importance in psychology so it's just because uh, of research methodology it actually guides us how how can we actually maximize the validity of our tool how can we maximize how can we take uh, this reliability of of the tools into the consideration because it's just because of these credentials 
once you have a very reliable tool once you have a valid tool for just carrying out the research then and only you can include the discipline into be uh, in, 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 into the science into the realms of the sciences actually uh, research methodology uh, can be actually again credited as to be uh, broaden the horizons of the knowledge into the uh, into psychology and when in 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 through the this, uh, research methodology we can briefly describe this uh, the areas of the research psych, psych, research in psychology with respect to its two objectives say for example uh, we can broadly classify uh, one of its type action and applied research so under the prism, under the arena of uh, research methodology, when we take up action and applied research as a subject, as, as an area into the research, it is duly uh, important. It's duly uh, associated with the solution oriented, uh, problem oriented, uh, these uh, problem solutions, isn't it? Whenever we face any kind of uh, challenge, say for example, okay. the invention, yeah. Say, for example, the invention of the vaccine in the current times can be placed into when we type, when we discuss the types of research methodology, the types of research under the prism of research methodology. So action and applied research can be placed into any research area which is just there because to search the solution for any existing problem. Like we can have an example from the very current scenario which we are facing. Uh, say, for example, scientists and every other medical institute is highly involved in uh, finding out the antidote, finding out the vaccine for this problem. So this is how we can efficiently carry out. Uh, are you asking something? No, no, no. Uh, go okay. on. Yeah, this is how you can actually carry out the every each and each and every research in a scientific way, in a scientific manner to make your research actually uh, when we speak of. The advantage of the need and importance of research methodology it's just because of its virtue you can make your research more valid and more reliable and even you can make your research commercialized isn't it you can actually market your research you can convert your research uh, into a patent but if and only if you had gone through a proper research methodology while conducting your research uh, while while going through your research because under this research methodology, we are discussing uh, what are the appropriate measures to take when selecting the sample size, what are the appropriate measures when uh, collecting the literature view, what are the pro appropriate measures, what are the appropriate steps to uh, decide which tool is to be used for interpretation of, of your data, isn't it? So how right. can you formulate your hypothesis? How can you formulate your objectives? So all the issues are actually discussed and people are being trained even to do these things in a scientific way otherwise otherwise uh, uh, psychology i think i uh, we lost you dr zahur on this can you hear me Okay, I think we have lost uh, Dr. Zahur for some time. I think he's a network issue he has. He will join us back. And in the meanwhile, let me see if there's anybody there on um, live. Hi, everyone. Kindly feel free to ask questions if you have any anything related to uh, research methodology. And this one subject, you know, that where I feel that uh, I used to initially when I was doing my psychology, getting really confused about it. But I think uh, with good uh, educators, I think I started liking the subject. Uh, Dr. Zahur, are you back? Yes, sir. there was a connection interruption because uh, it automatically I discussed with you. It's no asking problem. me for relogging and relogging and uh, again and again. No problem. No problem. Okay. Will... Okay. Yeah, I can see you on the screen now. So you were talking about the different uh, things that are required in research methodology. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes absolutely. I'm hearing you. OK, okay. so yeah, I was discussing about uh, this research methodology. It's just. Uh, mm -hmm an area it's actually highly involved in every discipline across uh, ranging from 
and the mm -hmm. applied science, applied arts, and uh, in actual in every uh, subject of humanities and arts, mm -hmm. isn't it? So it's just because of research methodology, uh, we can easily outline, uh, bring, uh, draw a thin line of difference between every other research area. And mm -hmm. just because of research methodology, mm -hmm. we can we can make our make our research very scientific in flavor, and we can make our research to be highly valid and reliable. And we can uh, again, uh, I'm repeating, we can again uh, commercialize them, isn't it? So, right. say for example, carrying out your research without a proper research methodology, without a proper uh, this set up your standardized format, how will you make people to rely or to establish or to replicate your experiments? Because it's just because uh, we have certain specified methods when we are going through any research, isn't it? So, this is right. how you can actually uh, replicate your experiments. This is how you can actually uh, look into the external and internal validity of the experiment. This is how you can easily rule out that there is no any extraneous variable into uh, just predicting the relationship between uh, independent variable and independent variable. This is just yeah, because yeah. of uh, research methodology only. Because we are we are actually training people. Yeah, we are we have been trained to understand. Yeah, to undergo each and through every each and every step wherever wherever we can control uh, every other extraneous variable we can uh, just bring the homogeneity in the sample because this is how you absolutely can uh, just make it more scientific you cannot rely on the folklore isn't it what if what if a student comes to you what if 10 students are coming to your survey are intelligent because mm -hmm. 10000 people are uh, 1000 people are saying we cannot we cannot rely on like in case of this jury procedure, this court proceedings, as in mm -hmm. case, like I'm giving an example, the court mm -hmm. relies only on the evidences, scientifically evidence, like say, for example, right. for any accused person, if right. 10,000, even 1 lakh people are saying in favor of him, but mm -hmm. if he is scientifically prone guilty, what is that mm -hmm. scientific procedure? The procedure is actually being followed through a methodological process. It is actually yeah. being followed through a standard format. This is our research methodology. Again, as in case of this uh, proceedings of court, we rely on the scientific evidences which can be replicated. We don't rely on uh, the folklore's need the, the sayings of the hundred thousand and ten thousand people. We simply rely on the evidence. Again, research methodology makes make us able to prove yeah to bring any scientific evidence to make our research just valid and reliable and we can, this is how just because we, we can uh, extend its external and internal validity. So we all like uh, like from the process from data collection, a process from analyzing your data, process from this uh, uh, framing your data, then going through the analysis, then interpretation, and then even if even if you got your results after uh, going your research project, and if, then again research methodology teaches us how to bring the evidence to support your study isn't it so this is right. how we actually can go through this detailed process yeah a detailed mm -hmm. discipline i think dr zahur we have lost you again dr zahur can you hear me um yeah so in the meanwhile again when he comes back uh rejoins us i am going to talk to my audience hi kavya hi sanwar um yeah i'm going to take up your questions what you've written so give me just some time i'm going to address and i'm going to put it across to dr zahul and he will definitely um, take it when he comes back and Stay around and other people who are around, please ask, feel free to ask questions. I'm going to answer each and every question of yours before we uh, wrap up the session for today. I have to just check. Uh, yeah, he has uh, joined back. Yeah, I'm, I'm re-logging. Yeah. Uh, no problem, no problem. So uh, my next question, uh, Dr. Zahur, to you is that um, 
what wh why do you think it is important for students to learn research methodology okay uh, can you repeat the question can you come again um, yeah i will repeat it again yeah yeah i will repeat it why it or how important it is uh, to learn the subject of research methodology okay 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 i would like to come on this point uh, from the very like uh, the very scientific perspective because uh, just reading a subject just going on adding on your knowledge and uh, just reading the content again and again and again and will not uh, serve the purpose anymore because in the contemporary time content more you. valid more reliable and uh, mm -hmm -hmm. yeah 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 no, go I'm, on go on yeah, i'm in i'm in like i was yeah, saying yeah, in, in the contemporary times in the times which we are going through right now we cannot rely on just cramming and reading the subject and just adding degrees into our bag isn't it so we need to bring this uh, scientific flavor yeah scientific excellence into any in, into each and every subject isn't it so for right. that sake even 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 in present university where from i am teaching uh, they have introduced this subject in graduation as well because uh, when you know when a uh, student when uh, when any individual when any scholar is interested in to bring something new into the market like a toddler can an adolescent a school school child can just be curious about to bring something to uh, this arena bring to the market with the, with 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 the help of his uh, teachers and uh, elders but all is need all we need is to have a proper research methodology like how can you make others believe that i have did this thing and it has to be valid and it has to be reliable and you need to accept it you cannot just beat your head you cannot just uh, collect a gang with you and make people believe this uh, i'm done i have done this thing isn't it so we need to go yeah. to a proper uh, format say for example uh, when we are adding two molecules of uh, this uh, uh, this uh, water h2o carbon dioxide so all these experiments have uh, the property of replicability they can be yeah. replicated and we will get the same results so whenever a student uh, in bachelor's in, in master's or in phd they they they, they need to come up uh, something concrete they must go through this uh, research methodology that then is uh, then and only they can actually learn uh, how to do a kind of research how to how to do patents okay well, that sounds yeah. really interesting uh, i'm sure yes, that's it. why it's important in the in the field of psychology also to do research methodology yes yes uh, Dr. Zahur, the next question is what kind of challenges do you think the students face while they are learning the subject okay students generally when they come up like i have been teaching the same course for this uh, three th three terms like i have taught more than five or six hundred students in three batches isn't it right. if both uh, offline and online so across across discipline like most of the students especially exemption uh, psychology and statistics especially i'm giving you the exemption psychology and statistics rather mm -hmm. every other field uh, rather students from every other field they face difficulty because they lack the basic statistics the basic mathematical abilities and they lack the basic concrete knowledge into the research so there are major they, they, they that serves as a major challenge because when you go through when you go through the across the the syllabi and the academy platform for this research methodology you can see uh, more than 50 percent of uh, the content is just uh, purely statistical or mathematical not uh, higher order but they lack this basic kind of uh, uh, numerical abilities when we generally talk of mean mode and median and measures of dispersion and uh, other higher order inferential statistics they lack they actually face these kinds of challenges what my suggestion in this regard is because uh, this is uh, these research tools uh, basic statistics and inferential and research methodology in particular is part and parcel of every subject i would recommend it to be included at bachelor's level uh, as one of the subject at across every domain because this serves as the part and parcel of every subject because when you see like a person from law a person from history they are actually lacking this general mental ability this general mathematical ability 
so uh, we do as a teacher is challenge to making them learn how to obtain mean how to measure mode how to measure median uh, actually these types of uh, skills and abilities are uh, very percussed in research across domains these are the major challenges uh, they lack in this uh, statistical abilities okay Dr. you said that uh, maybe a student of law also should know um, research methodology. Could you uh, elaborate on that? Unko kya zarurat padegi research methodology karne ki? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, I will let you know. Say uh, the research methodology in like if they have been uh, given a topic to see the trend, like when hmm. you are seeing the trend of the variables, how do variables change with respect to the time? With respect to the temperature, with respect to any particular incident, so here they need to bring the data. They need to uh, categorize the data mathematically. Uh, otherwise, they, they 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 cannot do justice with the topic, isn't it? Okay. So there are mathematical formulations for each and every problem. Ex exactly like in case uh, you are quoting this law as a domain, they actually can need. When uh, again, I will come to this point when they need to produce. Uh, the evidences, uh, the research articles, the research reports that this has been the trend uh, before this decade and this happened this decade. Right. What are the other the other factor? And even statistical inferential, when we generally speak uh, research methodology, we are being taught how to control every uh, other extraneous variable. How do we? How can we take any other extraneous variable as consideration? How can we actually see whether it's affecting our uh, variable intended or not? So indeed, okay. they require the basic statistical abilities. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that is a very valid point, and uh, that makes me understand why it is important for all other domains also besides psychology to know the uh, have a understanding um, base level understanding also of research methodology exactly. as a subject. Exactly. Exactly. Ground yeah. level. Yeah. Very. Absolutely, Dr. Zaur. So, Dr. Zaur, what do you think? Uh, what could be the tips that you would give to these uh, students who face these challenges while they want to learn this subject? Because, uh, to hai wo subject, agar psychology yes, 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 absolutely. See, what my uh, suggestion to those students is first of all, uh, they just need to bring themselves out of this mathematical anxiety. There's a difference between <laughs> mathematics and statistics. I can relate to that, Dr. Zahur. I mujhe to same hi lagta tha jab main padhai kar rahi thi. To mujhe lagta kya hai ye? No, no, it's not. Uh, this is this is the trend which actually, you know, most people are mostly afraid of numbers. Like when it comes right. to addition, subtraction, and division, and when they see brackets and under root and division and uh, the other mathematical symbols, they get scared of. Otherwise, uh, we can actually draw a line of difference between mathematics and statistics. Bring statistics oh, wow. is uh, a bit easier than mathematics, so we need to bring this anxiety uh, uh, out of ourselves. It's not, uh, and they can they can uh, do the very best ma basic mathematics of tenth, tenth, and ninth class. So it's not okay that higher other mathematics and uh, statistics. Okay. Okay, Th that is very comforting when you say that uh, mathematics uh, statistics is easier comparative to mathematics. Yes, yes. Bari batayenge, kaise, uh, how, uh, can you give us an example, uh, if possible? Yes, exactly. Uzbari. See, uh, I, will, I will put it very rightly. What is the difference between these two? Like in mm -hmm. statistics, we are generally uh, dealing with the numbers, like addition, subtraction, mm -hmm. division, and looking at the trend of the variables. Like, see, for example, I will give an example. Uh, mm -hmm. we, have a, we have a pond in front of us, the river pond, and it's major. It's uh, depths are varying, like it's the depth mm -hmm. of this pond are varying. Like in the deepest level, we have six feet, and then we have four feet and three feet, isn't it? So right. when we ask people to obtain the meaning of these uh, these three depths of the mm -hmm. pond, so three plus four plus six is equal uh, thirteen. So simply right. they need to divide thirteen by three, isn't it? Number of observations, right. sum of observations. So this is how we can easily obtain it, and this is even actually. It can give us uh, give them the idea measures of dispersion, which is another higher order statistics. How do values disperse from one another, isn't it? But when it comes mm -hmm. to the mathematics, so mathematics is a different kind of game. We are not actually always dealing with the uh, numbers in pure in, in pure mathematics, where uh, mm -hmm. pure mathematics is more abstract, uh, more of abstract knowledge and imagination. But in statistics, mm -hmm. is purely 
there's no numbers so there is nothing to be afraid of that that is very well said and i think uh, as you rightly said that uh, statistics mein agar process pata ho steps pata ho and you know the principles then i think it becomes easier to learn absolutely there are actually exactly no principles to be learned about there are always steps like when you when right. you are teaching yes. a student to obtain mean mode they just need to remember the steps this is the game of three or four steps actually uh, rest you need to do addition and division it's very simple no. okay yeah. तो बिसाइड्स दिस ये तो जरूर ये बात हो गई कि ठीक है यू डोंट नीड टू हैव एनजाइटी बट व्हाट ऑल अदर टेक्निक्स डू यू थिंक द स्टूडेंट्स शुड कैन लर्न और यू कैन हेल्प देम विद दैट विल हेल्प देम टू लर्न द सब्जेक्ट इजीली एंड एफिशिएंटली या दिस और क्या कर सकते हैं वो या या एब्सोल्युटली इट नीड्स एक्चुअली द बेसिक काइंड ऑफ रीडिंग बिकॉज़ दिस एंड it needs uh, imagination and to the problem recreation the scholastic problems the analytical problems they actually need to be guided what is an variable what is independent variable what is dependent variable a student who is able to distinguish between independent and dependent variable can do justice to this research methodology kind of subject and they need to improve oh. their basic numeric uh, numerical ability skills they, which they can either refer to any of the authentic website or the textbooks which are available in market and mostly uh, i would recommend uh, this uh, there are n number of books in the ma- market as well as in the library so could you uh, dr zahur just i'm stopping you in between about that because there is somebody on facebook live who's watching us uh, her name is nayana kumari and she is asking that you could suggest some books on research methodologies so if you could just uh, give us some names i'll type it on uh, the chat okay, or you okay. can take out okay see uh, for the basic conceptual learning they can go through uh, this kothari o t h a r i kothari right kothari is yeah. there okay yeah uh, like if they need to study for for an author they can uh, search a book for by forzano f o r z a n o uh, by by f o F A R Social Science Research Methods. So Social Science Research Methods by F O R F O R Z A N O Z A N O, and that is a book on uh, Social Science Research Methods. Social Science uh, research, methods. research Methods. Research Methods. I'm just typing it down for them so that it becomes easier for them. Um, Very well. Any other uh, books you think, uh, Doctor? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. See, see yeah. uh, when it comes to solving the numericals, uh, there are two books. I would uh, recommend yeah. the basic book, S K Mangal. S K Mangal. It's a book by Indian author, so each and every thing is clearly mentioned over there. Okay. On so uh, book S. K. by on statistics. Yeah, statistics books by uh, S K Mangal. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, st- this uh, research statistical book for. Uh, Psychology and education for psychology and education. Okay, okay, okay. Another one is Henry. Ah, yes. uh, Dr. Zahur, you will have to. Yeah, please repeat it. Ah, uh, for psychology and education, uh, I'll just finishing it. Ah, uh, another one no, is no. Henry E. Mm-hmm. Garrett. Henry Garrett mm-hmm. for. Uh, Yeah, Numerical. Okay. Another one. Mm-hmm. S. P. Gupta and V. Uh, K. Kapoor. And V. K. Kapoor. Uh, this will do. This will be the sufficient. The last one, S. P. Gupta and V. K. Kapoor. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. thank you so much for uh, guiding us uh, through these books i have noted it down on guys those who have asked the questions regarding referring uh, books on research uh, uh, methodology uh, dr zahur has gu- given us uh, fabulous names and you guys can go out and explore those books and uh, make the subject easier for you lovely um so my uh, dr zahur my next question is uh, let let me take it from the audience from the audience some of somebody has asked a question what is the significance of ip index journal 
Yes. What is the significance of IP yeah. in IP index journal? See, ha. Huh, this is uh, actually uh, UGC had is uh, continuously making some recommendations uh, in context mm -hmm. of uh, categorizing journals. See, for example, uh, what if I asked you, uh, like, before a decade, before five or six years, what was happening? Uh, people were just paying uh, the hefty amount for making any of their stuff to be published, isn't it? So there yeah. was no filter. There was no filter to uh, just uh, differentiate between a genuine work and uh, the paid work, isn't it? Right. So all right. ISBN IP categorized journals are the top brass journals of their respect of their respective domains and their editorial board uh, is of a high high quality and high expertise. So they don't ask for even hefty amount. You just even most of the IP and ISBN based journals are making your publications free of cost because they actually uh, use multiple filters to actually identify your identity this uh, the novelty and the originality of your research otherwise uh, right. before a couple of years it was a very easy job like you just pay five thousand and you can make publish your so th th that was all the game of your money because uh, when at the time of recruitment there were no filters mm -hmm. like if a student uh, invested one lakh rupees in just publications they can automatically increase their points when they got recruited. So this is how UGC actually took a very good initiative just to use categories and filter on the journals. Oh, that is that, the rest that, of, yeah. that's a very nice, uh, uh, that's a very genuine, you know, that's very important to know. I think, uh, Kavya, this answers your question. Uh, as uh, Dr. Zahur has uh, told that um, why is uh, IP index journal uh, so significant or important? Uh, Dr. Zhao, there's one more question from the audience by Sanwar. He uh, is asking that how to calculate personality traits by Eisnack pen inventory. I think it comes with the, there's an evaluation sheet of that. So would exactly. you like to go ahead? Yeah, yeah. See, uh, for that. If you could just give them a brief about it. Yeah, just give them a brief about it. Yeah, see, for that purpose, uh, I can share my this links uh, later, uh, Google Drive links, uh, in which yeah. I have uh, included each and every assessment tool with the detailed manuals and all. So for that sake, we need a stencil and we need uh, to with the basics and the man these parameters and the norm normal rules for measuring uh, your uh, interpreting the ISNIC tool. So for that, we need a detailed manual and we must be able to uh, identify and decipher each and each and every factor. Okay, I yeah. think that will, uh, Sanwa, that will suffice uh, as an answer to you. That uh, yeah, uh, that it, uh, is a detailed description. Yeah, okay. yeah, and there are manuals there while you are learning these tests, uh, especially under uh, clinical psychology. If that's what you're pursuing. Uh, lovely. Uh, Dr. Zahur, my next question is what are your tips for students who are preparing for uh, this subject or for the exams? I have lost you. Ha. Can you hear me? No, no, I, I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you tips to give to students who are preparing for the research methodology paper? So, uh, you know, it's very right thing. It's very uh, like it, it is actually knowledge and enrichment enrichment when you go through the basics of your research, basics of your subject first at first. So when we are actually dealing with uh, this research methodology, yeah, you have an examination of this. So basically, you must be able to uh, understand and decipher a very few basic concepts. Again, I would come to again to those points. What is a variable and how do we have? How do we create? Uh, how how do we see the exact mm -hmm. relationship between independent and dependent variable? And there are other tools to know about correlation, this test, psychological testing, and to know the sampling. What is sampling at first? So basically, they need to for each and every concept. What I would suggest they need to create the live example. Say for example, in case of if they need to understand snowball sampling, what is snowball sampling? 
So mm -hmm. even if even if uh, I repeat 10 and 20 slides in front of them to understand what snowball sampling is, they cannot until and unless they don't go with a concrete example, isn't it? For each and every concept, right. they can actually relate with the concrete example because when it comes to the writing the question, so evaluator and examiner is basically focused on your comprehension, your understanding of the subject. Otherwise, you can cram, you can just go for the, the rote learning of the concepts from any book and you can just copy and paste on the answer sheet. So that doesn't serve the purpose here. You basically need to understand the concepts, mm -hmm. then you can just with the help of examples, you can just uh, make your answers justifiable. And mm -hmm. rest is uh, this numerical abilities, which I was speaking at earlier. Right. Uh, you can go through the basic statistical the measures, basic yeah. you, which you can uh, get even from 11th and 12th books, numerical, when it comes to the solving the numerical, I would recommend to the students, those who are actually bothered or actually facing challenge, they can recommend to NCRT statistics of 11th and 12th. Okay. Yes, okay. NCRT statistics of 11th and 12th. Yes, yes, basically. So this will be basic. Yes, absolutely. This will even uh, make them very better understandable uh, each and every concept of statistics, which you can, which they can uh, write in the exams when the questions are asked in that way. Very well, very well. Uh, Dr. Zou, there's a question from Kavya and she's asking another question, which is why we always prefer uh, Scopus uh, SSCI index journal, not other index. Yeah, SSCI. Okay. SSCI so, and uh, Scopus. So SSCI and Scopus. Uh, Doctor Zohar, are you with us? Can you hear me? I think we have lost him in between because of the network. Uh, he will join back again. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, keep on asking questions. I think he is giving uh, all the knowledge and understanding of people who are you know, uh, preparing for your uh, net uh, UGC exams as well as for uh, the topic research methodology uh, as a whole. Uh, Kavya, once he's back, uh, we'll ask him about the credit points and uh, we shall get back to you. So, Dr. Zohu okay, is back okay. with us. Okay, ha. Uh, uh, Corpus and SSI. See, uh, yeah. how does it work? Basically, you must mm -hmm. know, I'll let you know what is SSCI uh, first. Uh, SSI is Social Science Indexing. So it's again, the top brass filter actually includes the journals of a country, particularly of uh, India, which are highly reputed, which are actually uh, from the top brass institutions, the journals which are being uh, run by IITs and central institutions and the editorial board is highly uh, reputable and very expert into the field. And it actually can make you see how uh, it, it, it's very important for you to make an entry to write a paper for SSEI. Uh, see, if you are uh, looking in a broad position like postdoc or a job, so they don't consider your journals even if you uh, publish it from your nearby city or nearby town. They have mm -hmm. even this, uh, the world world class classifications of journals. Say, for example, if you pick up any journal from uh, mm -hmm. any discipline which is included into SSCI index, so mm -hmm. that journal must be known by each and every faculty, each and every institute each and every selection committee across globe okay so for example okay. in psychology we have a particular journal particular journal uh journal of community or clinical psychology isn't mm -hmm. it which is included in sci so mm -hmm. it's uh inevitable it's very certain each and every one among psychology researchers and faculties and selection committees are well aware of this journal and if they learn that you have published mm -hmm. your paper, so it actually guarantees your credibility. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it validates your qualification. If you say you are, uh, you did PhD or masters in this very subject, so it validates your credibility and qualification, and it can make you easily access postdoc positions and even jobs. Mm -hmm. 
at higher at highly reputed institutions in IITs and in centrally funded institutions. Very well. So I'm sure, uh, Kavya, you got an understanding why it is important, to, why they always prefer Scopus and uh, SSCI index journals to others. Very well. Um, my next question to you, Dr. Zahur, is how can one choose their topic for research while they are uh, uh, researching on a particular, uh, while they have a project or something? OK. <clears throat> uh, while yeah. choosing, generally, I have, I have uh, seen this. Uh, most of the students face this problem. First, mm -hmm. they need to identify the operationalization of the concept, the operationalization, whether this variable can be operationalized, whether I can, can I, whether this variable can be quantified. Do I have the parameters to quantify the variable? Do I have the tool available already? Do I need to revise the tool? Do I need to adopt the tool? This is how, like, you cannot go uh, for any abstract kind of thing. Say, for example, uh, I, in my in my in, in, in my career i came across a topic one of my noon came to me and asked i do uh, i'm a kind of uh, i have a kind of interest in doing research in witchcraft mm -hmm. okay witchcraft. yeah how can we operationalize this witchcraft how can we measure how can you identify the people those who are uh, occupied by this witchcraft i can identify and what are the tools which you are going to uh, use upon them isn't it? So this is how you face challenge when it basically we must be very able to clear whether my tool is existing in the literature at first. Uh, do I need to identify uh, this, develop the scale again? Do I need to revise the scale? And at first, do I, can I operational, how, how can I make it justified to the board of committee, to the selection committee, even how can I define it? Isn't it? So this right. must be very clear at the very outset of your research. Uh, how do right. we do? How do? How can I define my variable? So that will become one of the precautions uh, you take while choosing a topic. <clears throat> absolutely, absolutely. Otherwise, uh, it can turn out your research program it can uh, turn out your research journey very problematic. So for the time mm -hmm. sake, your research advisor will accept it because it happens commonly. Your research. Uh, by any other factor, he may be in a hurry, he may be going through some interpersonal issue. So they may, uh, your research advisor may, in, in any chance, may sign your uh, research proposal. But when, whenever there is a board of studies, you will face problems. Mm -hmm. Whenever. Because you will always fail to identify, define, and operationalize your variable. You, you will not be able, in a position, to make others understand what 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 are the parameters on what parameters i'm measuring this variable right so yeah lovely uh, so any other precautions they need to students should take while they are selecting a topic or yeah. Selecting a topic? Uh, yeah we Besides all uh, we all must go uh, not to take any operation this traditional variable like you see for example uh, which has been extensively researched like you are just doing nothing new we are just uh, picking up review from one variable and adding it to the other variable so we need to bring something very new into the research arena and we need to if even if you need to uh, develop your own tool but that the variable must be uh, under the ages under the jurisdiction of psychology yeah uh, the subject you, which you are going through okay absolutely yeah. okay uh, so dr zahur what uh, how can someone classify the research? Okay, yeah, exactly. So we can classify the research across. I think I lost you, Dr. Zahur. Um, okay, he'll be back again, but I think the session is going really strong, guys. Uh, we are getting, I mean, in fact, I am understanding a lot of different things after doing my master's uh, that, you know, how interesting research methodology is as a topic and how in-depth it can be and feel free to ask questions if you have any uh, we do have somebody who is quite in-depth into the subject and he is very very warmly sharing his experience uh, first in experience with us so feel free and ask questions uh, yes dr zahur you're back yes yes i'm back thank you yeah so, so uh, I'm confused. Do you have a question? 
yeah the, i will repeat yeah i will repeat the question again how can someone classify their research okay how can we uh, classify the research uh, yes how can we categorize who, see for example right. uh, yeah you know uh, when it comes to classifying the research we need to bring just in consideration uh, the outcome mm -hmm. and then the methodology it's actually your outcome of the research which uh, decides your methodology and which decides your uh, category of your research say for example i will come back to the other ex uh, explained example the invention of this antidote or vaccine for this COVID-19 isn't it so uh, the problem itself is uh, action and applied oriented isn't it we are mm -hmm. we are facing an immediate kind of problem and it actually demands it actually is uh, attracting an immediate kind of solution isn't it so in this right. very sense the, the problem is purely medical and it deals with the life of the people it's the is the, it's the life which is at stake so we need to go through the proper uh, procedure of experimentation. Like when it comes to uh, defining the level of significance of the experiment on which uh, grounds uh, we can easily differentiate our research. So for this very matter, we can go for this action and applied research and we need to go for this proper experimentation. We cannot go for the observation kind of thing, participant, non-participant, case study, correlational, descriptive, explanatory and exploratory. Mm -hmm. So yeah other kinds of research say for example uh, descriptive when i speak uh, descriptive right. uh, the research we research areas which we are going through in english in any kind of language isn't it mm -hmm. in language uh, so we don't do anything like we don't implicate anything into the uh, academic field into the academic discipline but we simply we do uh, add on we just broaden the horizons of our present knowledge uh, to the new realms of the knowledge say for example if you pick up any decade of any point point yeah if mm -hmm. you pick up any point as your research topic you actually go in detailed study of his contribution of his uh, literary content so you'll just make mm -hmm. your uh, thesis you'll just make your research in a way uh, it's purely descriptive you are just adding on you are just uh, broadening the horizons of the knowledge and you are just uh, making it more clear to the people what was the content what was the intent of that particular point in a particular time so this was descriptive when it comes to the defining the another area of the research when it comes to the objectives say for example next one we have exploratory research exploratory exploratory mm -hmm. in which we are just go on exploring and we don't go up with presumed hypothesis we cannot go with the hypothesis that uh, there is a finite number of planets around us isn't it like time by time time by time we are actually going into the new, uh, new realms of the universe isn't it so that can yes. be an exploratory research another kind of research we can go for is explanatory when you are when the variables are already when you are uh, just explaining the existing relationship between any two variable explanatory mm -hmm. you are just simply explaining mm -hmm. any other phenomena into the world like you mm -hmm. are facing any kind of problem Say, for example, uh, in this uh, this COVID-19, uh, mm -hmm. most of the people have been witness that they die of heart attack. Uh -huh. They die of heart attack. So this can be an mm -hmm. explanatory kind of problem. Just to rule out, just to ascertain the reason, why does uh, it, it, why does this heart, uh, it, it gives rise to the heart disease? Why does people die of heart attack when they suffer from COVID-19? So this can be okay. an explanatory kind of research. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. The next one is correlational kind of research where you are actually mm -hmm. interested in to see the linear relationship, the association between variables mm -hmm. where uh, say, for example, if what is the change in the variable in the particular independent variable and how does it is bringing the change into the dependent variable. So this okay. is a kind of linear research and we can go through uh, for this topic as a correlational research. Very well. Uh, yeah. I think that really uh, helps to understand how one can classify the research. Uh, yes, absolutely. So is there any uh, is there any process? Can someone commercialize their research? Yes, absolutely. You can. You can. You all can. You need to have uh, mm -hmm. another kind of research aptitude. You can actually commercialize your your research when you come up with the idea. 
when you come up with an actual like patents we cannot confine patents to be invented by scientists only mm -hmm. patent is a kind of thing like when whenever when whenever we are facing any kind of problem which is generally like if if a, if a person if a kid even if a 10th year 10th uh, class student is able to identify a problem which we are going through in in any kind mm -hmm. in transportation in telecommunication in simply in uh, uh, storage in at home mm -hmm. they find if they find any conventional solution to any kind of problem they can file a patent they can file a patent and they can commercialize it and when it comes to the research okay. actually every patent is a research so right. it has a process to file and to find the solution right yeah absolutely yeah, very well. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Zahu, there's a question from um, Rahul. He's asking, what are some emerging topics for qualitative research in psychology? Uh, if you could share some like yeah, yeah, absolutely. Qualitative research uh, in psychology. Uh, you can emerging topics. Yeah? He's asking that what are some emerging topics in qualitative yes, yes, research yes, in psychology? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we can actually uh, like uh, the emerging fields into psychology are uh, positive psychology, isn't it? Yes. You can go through yes, yes. positive psychology. You can go through this uh, when it comes to the Martin Seligman who clearly identified the two uh, cl classifications of happiness, hedonomic and uh, hedonomic, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other positive positive psychological constructs: uh, optimism, hope, resilience. Even in emotional intelligence, you can take up these topics as a as a qualitative kind of nature, and you can go on uh, just comparing the models and just go on the literature survey kind of thing, and you can make your uh, research uh, very apt enough and very good enough by going through the detailed uh, qualitative analysis and taking up uh, these uh, emerging variables from positive psychology. Right. Yeah. I think Rahul, that answers your question. There's one more question uh, from Kavya asking, uh, can you explain the credit points that first author, second author, get, et cetera, get when a paper gets published? Where these credit yeah. points are used? Yes, 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 absolutely. See, uh, it actually varies from selection committee to selection committee. When it comes to the selection, it's up to the board. It's up to the selection committee of a state particularly. Say, for example, if I'm applying for a position in Delhi, Delhi University, and if I am applying for any particular position in Delhi Commission, yeah, uh, Punjab Public Service Commission for higher education, so it varies from commission to commission, institute to institute. What generally happens, uh, say for example, we have three authors for a paper. The usual mm -hmm. breakup is five, three, and two. Like for the first, uh, mm -hmm. like if uh, this uh, out of ten points, if they need to distribute the points, uh, the first author gets five points, the next three, and next two okay yeah and mainly uh, we need to confine it to the variation with respect to the institution and the, uh, with respect to the commission itself so basically uh, the main credit goes to the first author and the corresponding author corresponding okay. and first author yeah so first and the second author that is what you mean yes 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 okay and how are these points used uh, dr zahur uh, in in case of two authors, yeah, yeah, they are equally distributed, ma'am. They are equally distributed. Okay, okay, okay. Fine, fine, fine. I'm sure, uh, Kavya, this uh, gives an answer to your question. Uh, there's one more question from uh, Kavya asking: uh, Can you share an example of uh, regression analysis? Yes, yes, absolutely. We usually do the regre regression analysis uh, just. There is not always any problem like in psychological research, there is a single independent variable and single dependent variable. So we may right. come across through a situation wherever we are facing the multiple independent variables or the multiple dependent. variables. So when we enter these multiple independent, multiple dependent variables into the regression analysis. So how does this reflect the result? How does the results are actually obtained? So it actually in your table in your analytical table in your coefficient table only the strongest predictors are to be filtered out okay say for example out of uh, say uh, this uh, on, on your academic achievement on your academic achievement 
how does it is being affected taking an academic achievement as a dependent variable and how it's being affected your uh, need for achievement and uh, your academic excellence isn't it your age mm -hmm. your gender your socio economic status uh, your parent of your this uh, occupation your parents how does all of these independent variables are entering into the equation to predict your academic achievement so all these types of problems are actually done in regression analysis very well thank you so much okay uh, I, we are almost at the verge of around wrapping up the session but my last question uh, i will just check if there is any other question from the audience um guys if you have any other questions feel free to comment on the on the live that you are and i'm sure you're getting uh, lovely insightful answers from dr zahur uh, shedding light on uh, yeah, research methodology uh, the last question that uh, Dr. Zahur that I would like to ask you is what would be your one message to budding young psychology, psychologists as well as psychology students that you would like to give? Yeah, budding psychology students and budding psychologists, I would recommend them to bring more, more scientific flavor into your research, make them more valid and make them more reliable and try to commercialize your concepts try to commercialize market them try to bring into the invention uh, the, uh, this intervention kind of research mostly intervention kind of where you can mm -hmm. make your research ideas uh, marketed in sports say for example in sports psychology particularly so right. device your research topics in a way that you actually can commercialize your market them in sports in defense in corporate you can, right. you can sell just sell your talent don't make it just uh, uh, write a thesis and then may make them to shell a bound. Isn't it? Okay. So make your uh, ideas uh, market valued. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you so much. There's one more question from Kavya before we leave. I think she's um, if we have to see the cause and effect relationship, can we mm -hmm. use the regression for that? Yes, absolutely. 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 Yes. Yeah, okay. Kavya, I think you can use the regression for you. Uh, regression. To see yes. the cause and effect. Yes. Because. Uh, uh, so, haan ji, boliye. Continue. Okay, okay, ma'am. Aap kuch bol rahe the. No, no, no. Aap kuch bol rahe the. Hello, uh, Dr. Zahur, you were explaining something. Yeah, actually, uh, it's it's actually uh, when it comes to defining the causation correlation, and most of the researchers get confused uh, when it comes to. Uh, differentiating between correlation and causation. Right. Correlation is simply uh, uh, what is what is the change which a change you bringing in the independent variable. How does it affects the dependent variable? And it's entirely different than causation. When an event is outrightly giving the cause to the other event, that, that's called causation. And in case of correlation, you need to actually decipher what is the change in the particular one variable and how does it's bringing change into the other variable so these are the very particular points which we need to look upon why do why actually and uh, deciding your topic and where actually going your going through your analysis lovely i oh. hope kavya this answers your question uh i think there's mr shabir also there hello mr shabir i think uh, he's asking for an email id of uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Zahur, sir. Uh, sir, can you later on put your email ID on our Facebook page on this video so that uh, people who are interested yes, can yes, definitely yes. Get in touch with you? Yes, uh, absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, I think he will put in uh, his contact details. So, for those of you who are interested in, I will, I will, I will just come your Facebook page and I will uh, share yes. my contact number over there. Contact email. Definitely. Sorry. Uh, definitely. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, everyone uh, who's joined us on Facebook Live, and thank you for your uh, all the questions. I hope we have answered all your questions. And a uh, uh, very heartfelt thank you to Dr. Zahur, who has taken out time and given us an immense amount of knowledge about and made it, uh, you know, made it sound as well as I'm hoping that research methodology is that easy to understand as a subject, practice as a subject, and follow it um, as in when you require it to follow it. As a parent, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so have a lovely evening, all of you. And looking forward to see you all on the next uh, Friday.
at the same time 7:30 on facebook live on ichars institute of clinical hypnosis and related sciences and once again thank you to everyone watching us uh, thank you dr zahoor and yeah, uh, have you. a lovely thank evening you. have a lovely evening you, and good night good thank night you. everyone thank you i am going offline